and we're about getting ready to start our Sunday morning services. And again, we're just glad to be here, and we welcome all you who are listening and watching this service this morning. God is good, and God bless you. Uh, let's have us a little prayer to get things started. It's always good to pray to God and thank God for this wonderful day. So, Father God, we just thank you right now in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. We come before your throne of grace. And we thank you for your mercy, and we thank you for your grace. We thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We ask this morning, O oh God, that thou would just wake up your church this morning, Father God, your people everywhere, those who are near as well as those who are far. We ask you to wake up those, Father God, who are sick today, those in the hospitals and nursing homes, those who have been shut in this morning, that you'll wake them up, Father, to a brand new day. I ask, O oh God, in the precious name of Jesus, that you allow me to speak your word this morning, Father God. Give me the words, Father God, from my inside that come directly from you to give back to your people, that they may hear and that they may receive something, Father God, to minister to their soul this day as mm -hmm. well as throughout the week. We thank you right now and we praise you for this ministry that you have set forth and put in place. We ask that you would do what you want to do with this ministry in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you and praise you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What we're going to do today, we're going to go back into 1 Samuel uh, chapter 15 and begin at verse 22. But before we go there, I want to give you a recap of what we was last week. As you recall, last week, and uh, mm -hmm. some of you might have took some notes from last week, uh, we got a lot of response from our services last week, and people were telling us how much they enjoyed it, and wants to keep these services coming to them. And one said they were so excited they couldn't wait until this week. So we're hoping that in their excitement that this week God will bring them even more of his word that will excite them even more to follow him to the fullness. So we thank God for those comments and for those listeners and those viewers of, of the Steel Free Anointed Ministry. Mm -hmm. Last week we, we start off with Exodus chapter uh, 3 and verse 13. So we'll do a little quick recap real quick before we get into uh, today's uh, part of it. Our topic or our message heading is called, This is your season, but being disobedient can disrupt your season. Being disobedient well, will disrupt your season, but this is your season. But being disobedient will disrupt your season. And we went into to Exodus chapter 3, we was in verse uh, uh, 13, and we, we was dealing with the Moses situation, how God had led Moses uh, out of Egypt with the people, and, and as they traveled up out of Egypt, uh, in fact, let's go to Exodus chapter 3 real quick, uh, and let's look at verse uh, 13 for a brief moment, and, and while you're turning there, uh, I'll just make some more comments on it, and that is that I had uh, led them up out of Egypt. And they was out in the wilderness, although they was traveling to this to their new season. And as they are traveling to their new season, things began to take place during this travel. And as we mm -hmm. can see, uh, are, are we there yet? Okay, uh, read verse 3 for me, please. I mean, verse 13 for me. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, mm -hmm. and they shall say, and they shall say unto me, and they shall say to me, what is his name? Mm -hmm. What shall I say unto them? Okay, now, then we go back again. We'll read and we'll see where God had called Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, but Moses was very skeptical. See, sometimes when you are going into your new season, you are very timid or skeptical about going into it because you don't know what to expect. All you know, this is something new for me to, to try to, to go through or to try to deal with. And just like anything else, we don't like to deal with things new and things. We don't want to deal with changes and things. So Moses immediately began to question God about what am I going to say to you people? You know, what am I going to say? And how are they going to respond to me? Who, who am I going to say told me to say this? Uh, uh, we'll say, who, who told me, who told you about this job? Uh, uh, stuff like that. We began to panic and stuff. So Moses began to have a God calm them down and say it. All you do is say to them that I am. I am. I am sent you. I am who I am. I am. Just, just say, tell them I am. And when we are going into a, a, a new job or something of that, that nature and, and we are very skeptical, just like going to a doctor. We get nervous mm -hmm. by going to a doctor. 
but we 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 have to trust that this doctor going to do what's best for us. We have to trust that this doctor knows what they're doing. We have to trust that this doctor, and especially if you proclaim to be a child of God, you have to trust God that he has already spoke to this doctor and that you are in the good hands that he wants you to be in. You have to do it. And we do that. We, we do that. We trust the doctors and stuff. So Moses had, wanted to ask God, well, who, 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 who should I say and what they going to say to me? Just tell them that I am sent you. In your season... You must be willing to go through your season in spite of. In spite of what it seemed like, you still must be willing to go through it. Okay, go on to verse uh, 16 for me. Oh, yeah, verse 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and say unto them, mm -hmm. The Lord God of your fathers. Mm -hmm. The God of Abraham, uh -huh. of Isaac, mm -hmm. and of Jacob mm -hmm. appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you mm -hmm. and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Okay. Now, again, as we in verse 16, we see again, we just doing a brief recap that God told Moses to gather all the elders of Israel and tell them, you know, gather them together, come together, and, and begin to tell them that, that, that you know, that, that I am the father of your, uh, uh, Abraham. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac, and I'm the God of Jacob. In other words, I appeared unto them, and I will appear unto you now. Mm -hmm. As I led them into their new season, I'm going to lead you into your season as well. Mm -hmm. And I need you to tell them that so they'll know that you are the one that I've called. See, sometimes we just don't understand that God has called us, and we get so skeptical, especially if we tell somebody mm -hmm. our story, and they can look at you like, I don't know about that. Maybe you, maybe you need to try something else. And then all of a sudden, when you do that, when you listen to that voice, all of a sudden your season has been disrupted. Mm. It's been disrupted. Doubt mm. will disrupt what God is trying to do for you. It, it'll disrupt it. A uh, 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 double-minded will disrupt what God is trying to do to you because God said that a, a double-minded person is unstable. Hmm. So if you're unstable, you're not even hearing God. You may be hearing something, but you ain't hearing God because you're so mm -hmm. unstable. You, as I say that you like the waves of the sea just being tossed to and fro. You like water that's 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 not warm or it's not hot rather, and nor is it cold. So it's good for nothing. And we know we don't want no people talking about I don't want no cold coffee. I want my coffee hot. It, it's warm. I can't drink that. Well, it's the same way in dealing with God. God don't want you lukewarm. He said if you're lukewarm, I'm gonna screw you out my mouth. Then I'm gonna get rid of you. You ain't good for nothing being lukewarm. But if you're hot, we can deal with you. If you're cold, I'm going to deal with you. That's how God look at it. You know? So so, so he told Moses, I want you to gather together. And, and, and uh, i got some more to tell you. So, so go on down now to verse 18. And they shall hearken to thy voice. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt come, thou the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And you shall say unto him, the Lord God of the heaven, of the Hebrews, hath met with us, mm -hmm. and now let us go. Mm -hmm. We beseech thee, three days journey unto the wilderness, mm -hmm. and we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. And and again, he told them to do this, and they did it. Now turn over to Numbers mm -hmm. chapter 20 real quick. Mm -hmm. Numbers chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Amen. Numbers chapter 20. And this is where, well, again, in our recap, we're going to see what Moses did. If you don't remember from last week, we're going to see what he did that disrupt his season. We're going to see what he did that disrupted his season. Numbers chapter 20. And we want to go to verse 7. Start at verse 7. And the Lord spake unto mm. Moses, saying, Take the rod mm -hmm. and gather thou the assembly mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Thou and Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. and speak unto the rock before their eyes. Okay, Moses. God told Moses. He spoke to Moses. He speaks to us too. And he said, "Gather, take your rod, take your rod, you, and you gather the assembly together. You and Aaron, mm -hmm. your brother, and speak to the rock." Now remember the words that speak. To the rock, like speak to the rock, audibly speak to the rock, mm. just speak to it, and let's go over and see what happened. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them 
water out of the rock. If you speak to the rock, it'll bring forth water, and it'll you'll be able to get the water to people from the rock. Now, water, let me get down to this from a, a spiritual representation of what it is. The rock represents Jesus himself. Mm. Upon this rock, I'll be in my church. So if you speak the word of God, speak Jesus to the people, the people will listen. If you show them what the rock is able to do, the mm -hmm. people will listen. The people will follow. Their season will not be disrupted because you're telling them, you're showing them what the rock is able to do. Jesus, that rock, on solid rock I stand, no other ground is sinking sand. So in your season, continue to mm -hmm. be obedient to the rock, the word, Jesus, and watch what happened. Speaking truth. Speaking truth. But, however, nevertheless, <laughs> go on down to verse 9. Mm -hmm. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord mm -hmm. as he commanded him. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Hear now, that? ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Mm -hmm. See, in our travels, when we are in our season, we are going to face some peoples along the way. We are going to face some obstacles along the way that will try to disrupt us mm -hmm. to try to take us off the path of where we're trying to go. Mm -hmm. now, and as we can see, as we come on see, Moses said, you rebels, you rebels, here now you rebels. So that means there were some people who had kind of like, let, let me see, probably like got on his nerves. You know, just really got on his nerves or something like that. Hard, Jesus said, uh, you know, hard-headed, stiff-necked people. So maybe what Moses was dealing with this time was some hard-headed and stiff-necked people, so he called them rebels. In other words, they was always complaining and murmuring and complaining and rebelling against what God mm -hmm. had told Moses to do, what Moses was trying to do. They were rebelling against it, speaking against it. This is, again, why it's so important that you don't tell everybody everything. Mm -hmm. See, when God tells you something, sometimes it's strictly for you. Bye. And you get they want to tell everybody about it. We did a message before on Steve and called You Talk Too Much. Now, I don't know if y'all remember that, but you talk too much. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes we talk too much. So when mm. God gives you something, it ain't for everybody all the time. It's just for you. Mm. Just for you. So, so, so Moses was talking to him and telling him, he said, you rebels. Mm. Somewhere along the line, these, these jokers had got on Moses' nerves. That did something that, that that really bothered him, stressing him out, so to speak, mm -hmm. in today's language. Uh, I'm just I'm just uh, irritated. That's the terminology they use. They're just irritated. So somewhere along the line, Moses had got irritated with the children of Israel. Now read on and see what happened. Now remember that God told us, speak to the rock. Speak, 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 speak to the rock. Read on. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smoked the rock twice. Moses lifted up his hand and with the rod he spoke the rock Christ twice, mm. two times. Mm -hmm. He hit it. And but remember now, mm. and if we don't remember, we forget. God didn't tell him that. God didn't tell him that. Amen. Mm. He said to speak to it, not strike it. But if Moses said, "Ye rebels, ye rebels," meaning somewhere again, somewhere on line, they had got on Moses' nerve. They had irritated Moses. And he said, you rebel. So he just grabbed that rod and picked it up and just hit that rock. <laughs> out of frustration, out of disappointment, out of anger, mm. out of rebellion. And at that moment, his season was disrupted. Amen. His season <laughs> was disrupted because of his disobedience. It didn't matter what the people had did. It didn't matter what the rebels had did. What counted was what Moses had did. And why? Just like Adam, God spoke to him and gave him a commission, a commandment. So it didn't matter what Eve had did. So, so when you're preaching and you're teaching, talking about, well, it was the lady who sinned. If she the one who did it, it doesn't matter what she did. God spoke to most to Adam, the man, and told him. He didn't speak to Eve. He spoke to Adam and said, this is what I want you not to do and this is what I want you to do. So, and Moses said, it didn't matter what the people did. So we can't blame nobody for our season being disrupted. We got to blame ourselves. Amen. Moses hit that rock mm -hmm. out of frustration, out of disappointment, out of Ooh, weariness. Yeah. And when he did that, that was called disobedience. And it disrupted 
his season. Because again, as we said last week, if you recall, he said, I, I, I won't get in that with you. I, I can see the promised land, but I won't go with you. Because at that very moment, God made it plain and clear to Moses, you will not take the children into the promised land. Hmm. Your disobedience has interrupted your season. That's our recap from last week. Now let's go on to part two of this week. Part two this week is simply called, this is your season, but being disobedient will disrupt it. And this week, family, we'll go on to the book of Samuel. Samuel chapter 15, verse 2. 22. And again, we're not going to be long with you. We, cause we want to get things to you as briefly, as clearly, as understandably as possible so that you are able to get it, reflect on, mm. remember it, and share it throughout the week. That's what we're trying to do here at Steerfield Money Ministry. And I thank God for my family here mm -hmm. that we come on here every week. And all my listeners, all our, our deaf listeners, we, we just praise God for you. We love you. We love mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Come to mm -hmm. and listen and, be old, and, and watch what God does. Watch what, what God does. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, listen again, church, mm -hmm. part two. This is your season, but mm -hmm. being disobedient will disrupt that season. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1 uh, uh, Samuel chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse 22. <laughs> and Samuel said, that the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, mm. as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Mm. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, Okay. and to hearken than the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to go back and give you just a small recap of that. This is the book of Samuel, okay? And Samuel is talking, matter of fact, go up to verse 10. Go back to verse 10. Mm -hmm. And begin to read from verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, mm. and hath not performed my commandments. Amen. Come on, read it. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. All night. Now God said to Samuel, he spoke to Samuel. Samuel, as we do our, our, our recap of the early verses, you find that Samuel was a, was a prophet. He was a God man. God, he's a prophet. And Saul... God has sought up as king. Mm. See, God... Who's it? Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, mm -hmm. God called Saul, sought him up as king. This is your season, Saul. Mm -hmm. This is your season, now. Sought him up as king. Now, we go back, we look, and we say that God had told Samuel some things. And he had told Saul, but he told Saul, to, to go saw, and smoke the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. So, Saul smoked the Amalek from Heba until you come to Surah, that is over against Egypt. And verse 8 it says, And he took Hagar, or Agar, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and early destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. Now, what God had told Saul to do was to destroy everything that was there. Leave nothing untouched. Mm -hmm. Leave nothing unharmed. Or don't leave anything alive to destroy it all. If you don't, just like doctors and just like having a disease or uh, 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 it's a show that come on where they be uh, dealing with people with different uh, 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 diseases and things on, like bumps and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they say when they get it out, they have to make sure they get the core. If you don't mm -hmm. pull the core out of it, it will come back to you. Mm -hmm. So they have to get the core. God told Saul to get the core out. Kill everything, destroy everything, get it out. Don't leave nothing because if you leave something, you're going to have problems. But Saul didn't do that. Mm -hmm. He left the king alive. He left the king alive. <laughs> Verse 9 said, But Saul and the people spared a guy and the best of the sheep. If, I t if God said destroy the animals, he has a reason for telling you that. 
You get the animals, and the animals could be diseased. Mm -hmm. And you mix them with yours, and what happens? You got a diseased bunch of animals that nobody can eat. Epidemic. Epidemic. <laughs> you get with the wrong peoples in life, and you get infected by their negativity. You get infected by their wordness. You get infected by their disobedience. You get infected by their lying. You get infected by their cheating. You get infected by their stealing. You get <laughs> infected by their yap, 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 yap. If you don't get away from it. So God said, quit, don't mix with certain things. Mm -hmm. So I said to destroy everything, you didn't do it. Ba -ba -ba. Disobedient will interrupt your season. Mm -hmm. So Saul didn't do that. Yeah. So go on down, verse 9 said, But Saul and the people spared the Hagar the beast and the best beast and the best oxen and the fern and lambs and all that was good. Everything they thought was good, they just jumped on it, kept it. Just been, everything mm -hmm. that looks good ain't good. Everything that has a decent taste to it ain't always decent either for you. I love ice cream, but good God am I after the fight. You see what I'm saying? So I got to leave it alone regardless. And, and it goes, say, say, and would not utterly destroy them. Mm -hmm. But everything that was violent, they refused and, and, and destroyed it. See, they looking at the outward appearance of things. This look good, we're going to keep it. Now that look bad, we're going to destroy it. That ain't what God said. Because God said it's not that outward appearance, but the inward appearance. Mm -hmm. It ain't what on the outside, but what's on the inside of you. See, it may, that, that stuff might look good. Them cows and, and the oxen might look good on the outside, but inward of that disease, that hidden disease. It's just like yeah. people. We find ourselves attracted to people because of the outward appearance, mm -hmm. but inward of yeah. like raving wolves. Raving wolves. Once you get with them and everything, and then all of a sudden, the floodgate opened up and you were like, oh Lord, send me a raft. <laughs> Save me. And this is what was happening. So right here we see where Saul had just had his season interrupted because of disobedience. Because of disobedience. Read verse 9 for me again. But Saul and the people spared Agath and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatness, and the lambs, mm -hmm. and all that was good, mm -hmm. and and would not utterly destroy mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. but everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Everything that was vile and refused, they destroyed it. Mm -hmm. But what looked the good to it, they held on to it. Mm -hmm. What looked the good, they held on to it. It's like, what's that drink that you can drink it, and then you taste it, it is so bitter. So, just so bitter. Bitter to you. So I like sour grapes. It looks good. It makes me but it's sour to mm. you. Take that old, you know, what that old face to be making that old mush in my face. And so you can't always look at the outward appearance of things. So Saul season had been disrupted right there. Now go to verse uh 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 ten and read over and let's see what God say about this. Let's see what mm. God say about this in pertaining to Saul. And then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, mm. for he has turned back from following me, mm. and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And it grieved Samuel, and it cried. God said, It repenteth me that I have set Saul up. It repented me that I sought him up to be king. God give you something and you don't do what he wants you to do with it. You don't use it the way that he wanted you to use it. It's like getting into a job. You you go into the job, they give this promotion on this job because they feel like you're best qualified for it. And then you get in that job and you're doing things and you get relaxed and everything. You get to listen to other people and everything. And you stop doing what you was doing to get you in the job in the first place. And now the people are looking at you, the supervisor looking at you, your boss is looking at you. Uh, 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 human resource look at you and say, uh, what did we do? We thought he changed on them. They, they changed on them. We, we got to do something. Now you find yourself being demoted. Mm. Or it, it, at the most you're being demoted. At the worst you get fired. Mm. Because you're not doing what you were supposed to do. Mm. You're not doing what you was doing to get you to that position. You're not doing what you was doing to get into your new season. Now that you've gotten into your new season and got so relaxed in your new season, you begin to do what you want to do, and that disruption, that disobedience, disrupt that season. Now you're back somewhere. 
God said, it repented me that I made Saul king. It repented me that I'd done that. Repent. Oh, my best. <laughs> Amen. It repented me. I want to tell you what repent me. Give me the definition. He said, it repented me that I made him king. God said, I regret making that wrath of me. I regret giving him that promotion. I regret buying that brand new car for that 16 year old child. I regret having that 18, 19, 20, whatever. I regret it. That's what God said. It repented me that I did this. I made him king and look what he's doing. His season just got all disrupted. His disobedience have caused me to have regrets. Plain and simple, just have regrets. Mm -hmm. Your disobedience will interrupt your season. Your disobedience will cause God to have regrets about what he is doing for you. Because God want to bless us. He want to bless us from the lowest to the up. From the uttermost to the, from the guttermost to the uttermost. He want to bless us going out and coming in. He want to bless us in the fields. He want to bless us in the city. He want to bless us in the town. He want to bless us when we sit here. He want to, God just want to bless us. But you, we, we, when we step outside of what he want, he regrets it. It repents him. One, said, one, 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 one verse he said, he said, he repented me that I made mm -hmm. me. I regret that I made, man. That's a cold statement coming from the creator of all things. I regret that I made, man. And he regretted it so much. Basically, he said it, it just hurt him, though. Don't look at it like God said it, he regretted it because he's so mad. He, it, it hurt him to see what his creation was doing. He told Noel, I want you to build an ark. I want you to build an ark. And I want you to make it this side, that side, this side, and that side. I was 85 cubits, 110, 515 cubits. I want you to build this ark because I'm going to let it rain. I'm going to let it rain. Why? Because it repented me that I made man. I regret that I made it because look what they're doing. I put man in a season of prosperity and look what he's doing. His disobedience is, is causing his season to be disrupted. So Noah, I want you to build this ark because it's going to rain. And it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. And when it began to rain, the people began to cry out. Let us in. Let us in. And Moses had looked at him. I can see him looking at him now. I told you. I told you. I told you. Now all I want to know, how much water can you drink? Because it's going to rain. It's going to rain. And we don't, don't hear a lot about swimming, but if you couldn't swim, you would definitely, it didn't matter if you could swim or not. 40 days and 40 nights, we get six inches of rain right here and everything flowing. Cars floating down the road. Can you imagine 40 days of rain? 40 days of rain. And, and some people try to spruce some of the things that are laid down like that, but you even notice that we have got six inches of rain and we got stuff just flowing. Houses flowing, bridges falling, mm -hmm. uh, uh, dams breaking, cars floating down the road with six inches, ten inches of rain. Can you imagine 40 days of rain? Mm -hmm. Your disobedience will cost you 40 days of rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your paddle boat ain't going to do no good. <laughs> they said that the Titanic was unsinkable. It wasn't raining 40 days and 40 nights when the Titanic sailed. This Titanic sank because of disobedience. Because of not listening. And when you feel like you better than God, that you're above God, mm -hmm. then things going to happen. The unsinkable ship. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to tell you the unsinkable ship was that ark that Noah built. It didn't sink. And when it did what God wanted to do, it rested on top of Mount Ararat. And they got an ark down in uh, Williamstown, Kentucky, a replica yeah. of the ark, sitting in Williamstown, Kentucky. And if you go down and look at it, they got it sitting high up on a hill. Mm. It resting on my ass. It's my Arak. Mm. Because it couldn't see. Yeah, because God was in control. God was God. So God said to, 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 to Samuel, the prophet, that it repented me that I made Saul king because of his disobedience. 
And uh, go on down and read. We're going to see what happens. I think we're in verse 12 now. We're... And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about and passed on, and gone down to, to Gilgal. Ain't nobody told him to go to Gilgal. <laughs> God didn't tell him to go down there. Saul didn't tell him to go down there. I mean, Samuel didn't tell him to go down there. Read on. Get, get, get. And Samuel said to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou, the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Now, this is what he said. Because, because, uh, we, 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 oh, Lord, we lie on God. We lie on God. He said, he, Saul speaking to Samuel, and I said, Blessed be the Lord. I have done. Read one more time. <laughs> and then he came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Now Saul want to tell Saul, Saul, Saul going to go to Samuel the prophet, the man of God, and say, Well, blessed be the man of God. Blessed be you, Saul. I have performed the commandments of God. I've done what God told me to do. I've Ooh. done everything God told me to do. But see, what we don't understand is the thing that we're doing in secret. God bringing the light. He bring the light. So Saul so like, so now we try to be impressive. We go to our boss and we say, look, I did what you told me to do and I did even more. I did this song, this song. Well, they know what's going on. Because they got the letter. They got the phone calls. You know, the people where you're supposed to be going, they don't call and tell them, uh, uh, this, this driver song, so, 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 this, this nurse song, so, so, so. You know, they, they, you know the, 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 the dispatchers or the other supervisors, other, other, other workers, they, they call and tell us stuff on you. You don't know. But God knows. So he said, but see, Saul don't know what Samuel is talking about. Oh, but. He, he just jumped up front trying to give himself a pat on the back. I did what the Lord commanded me to do. Read on. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul mm. said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Mm. And Samuel said, What meaneth then? Sheep in mine ears, mm, and mm, the lowing of the oxen which I hear. Saul said, "I performed the commandments of the Lord." What Saul had did, what we normally do a uh, 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 majority of the time, lying <laughs> and half doing stuff. We do just mm -hmm. enough to get by to make it seem like we're doing stuff, and that's what Samuel, Saul did. He did enough to get by to make it seem like he did what God wanted to do, but he didn't because God wants to perform it to the letter. To the, to the letter. Not not half half heartedly, but to the letter. Because doing stuff had hardly room for, for, for mess ups and disobedience for doubt and stuff when you do stuff hardly. It leaves room for destruction. You build a bridge and you do it half hardly, don't use the proper uh, concrete, the proper side gauge and everything, the bridge will fall. You might ride across it for a couple of days, but soon or later it's coming down because you did it half heartedly. And when you do stuff half heartedly, there are consequences. There are consequences. So Saul, Samuel said then, if you did this, if you did what God told you to do, if you performed the commandments like God told you to do, if you destroyed the city like God told you to do, leaving nothing unturned like God told you, or nothing alive like God told you to do, if you did this to the fullest of what God said, then what is this bleeding of sheep and oxen that I hear in my ear? <laughs> then why do I hear oxen and sheep whining and carrying on? If you did what he told you to do. Now, I, I, the only noise I'm supposed to hear is the noise from the people. Read on. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Now listen. This is another, this is another story. This, this is another message. Shuffing and jiving, shucking and blaming, shucking and blaming. I didn't do it, the people did. Shuck and blame. I didn't do it, the people did. Shuck and blame. That's another message in itself. Then that's what Saul said. Saul said, he said, I didn't do it, the people did. <laughs> I didn't do it, the people did. Adam said, I, 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 the woman that you gave me, she did it. <laughs> Moses said, well, the people, they were rebels, they did it. You know, shuck and blame. Blame it on somebody else. <laughs> 
So Saul did the same thing. He said, and, and Saul brought them from Acolyte, like, or where we at, verse, verse 15? Mm -hmm. and, and, and Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalite. For the people spared the beasts of the sheep and on the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord, trying to make it look good. Lord, we, they did it for you. They they want to bless you, God. They they want to make sure you was all right. So they brought them. Now, I ain't asked them to do nothing. I told you what to do. I told Adam what to do. I told Moses what to do. I told you, Saul, what to do in order for your season to be complete. Disobedient will disrupt your season. Read on. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou waste little in thy own sight, waste thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Lord anointed thee king mm -hmm. over Israel. He said, when you were small in your tribe's sight, mm -hmm. when you just a little thing, didn't God come to you and make you king? Mm -hmm. Didn't he speak to you? Mm -hmm. When you was a little child and you had bad things, you had polio, didn't God come and heal you? Now you can walk straight. Mm -hmm. When you was a little child and you had that cold and, and, and diabetes and, and, and all things, didn't God heal you and make you straight. Now you can play basketball. Now you can run the train. Now you can battle the toward your school. Didn't God do all these things for you? Read on. And Samuel said, When thou waste little in thy own sight, waste thou not make the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. See, when he mean little too, he ain't talking about like he was, he, he, he's not talking about when he was like, like, this because back then, uh, in these days, things was doing in early stages and late stages. You was young when you became a king, sometimes young as eight years old when you become a king. And you could be a king, uh, uh, as we uh, we spoke about Mo I mean, uh, Noah from minutes ago. When Noah began to build an ark, Noah was around 600 years old. 600 years old. And, I, and I, when we look at that day, 600 years old, that's old. That's, that's Methuselah. Mm -hmm. But he was 600 years old because of Dick. A day to God is like them thousands of us. Mm -hmm. See, God don't measure things like we do. And this is why we sometimes we make this statement, y'all listen to me. We make this statement about we're in the last days. We're in the last days. I see it coming right now. What is you seeing coming? These are the signs. These are the signs. They are signs, but you don't know when it's going to happen because the Bible says, uh, he said, no man knows the time, the day, nor the season. We can talk, we can predict, we can put stuff out there, and we need to watch what we're putting out there. But no man knows the time, not even the Son of God. He said, nobody but the Father. But rest assured, you better be paying attention because the thief come like mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. That's what he said, he come like in the middle of the night. Still killing the storm. Still killing the storm. Mm -hmm. And he said, because if you know when the thief will come to your house, you'll prepare yourself to wait on it. But when you don't know, and this is why we have to mm -hmm. always be on our God, sort of with that saying. Mm -hmm. We have to always be about God's business because we don't know when the sky is going to open up and going to come. Mm -hmm. The sun may arrive, but that don't mean the sky is open up. Not for God to come. That's right. Read, read on. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites mm -hmm. and fight against them until they be consumed. When God told him to go and fight with the Amalekites and destroy them until they be consumed. In your season, you are supposed to do some things. Like, for instance, if you're going to school to be a nurse, there are things that you must do during that period of time to be that nurse. There's classes that you must go through. There's uh, uh, some things in, in, the, in the operating room or whatever that you must do. There's temperatures and stuff to be checked. There's pulse to be checked. And if you don't do these things, you have to do it. You mm -hmm. check the temperature, but you don't check the pulse. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. So when you come down to be graded and to take your final test to get your license or whatever case may be your student, you don't get it. Why? Because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. This is not high school where you miss the class you go back and take it over. Just like that, you're dealing with people's lives. So when God tells us to do something, he tells us to do it for a reason. When he told Saul to utterly destroy everything, he told him that for a reason. 
There was a movie that come out some years ago when a young man had got into a fight with uh, uh, some guys. Well, we had one guy anyway. And he beat the guy up. He got into the fight and beat the guy up. The guy was bullying so he beat the guy up. But he didn't, 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 didn't really utterly destroy the guy. Mm -hmm. He beat him up. And when he went home, his mother told him, he said, you should have taken him out. Sound bad, but he said, you took him out. He said, he said, he said because by you not taking him out, he got a chance to come back and get you. And so later on, as, as portrayed in the movie, later on down the road, the young man was at a, at, 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 at a place where he was getting some water. And he was down on his knees getting mm -hmm. this water because out in like a little desert area, getting some water. And when he knew the thing, that same guy that he had got into it with was back with three other people. And guess what they did to him? Took him out. Mm -hmm. Took him out. Mm -hmm. Other words, when God said do it, he means do it. All the way, not some of the way. And this is why we can't be lukewarm and serving God. We can't be straddling the fence and serving God. We either have to be in or out. Again, I don't want you to be lukewarm. I need you to be hot or cold. If you're hot, I'm going to use you. If you're cold, I'm going to deal with you. That's how God works. An unstable mind is, is very undependable. Mm -hmm. It's very undependable. He says you got to let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. In other words, say yes and say no. Don't say no maybe. I think about it. Because that means you ain't going to do it. That's unsure. If, 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 if you ask me something, I say, well, maybe, maybe mean no. So I might as well just going to tell you no. Because maybe give me the opportunity to really think about it anyway and make that sincerity like, you must be crazy or something like that. I'm not going to do it. So when Saul did not do all that God asked him to do, his season was disrupted because his disobedience. Mm -hmm. Read on. And the Lord sent thee on a journey. And said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners and the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, read that one more time. I, I need you to read that one more time. Yeah, that's, that's... Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord. And again he said, Wherefore then did you not obey? Key word, obey. Obey. Do we understand what the word obey mean? Let's, 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 let's define the word obey. Mm -hmm. Obey means comply with the command direction or request of a person or a law submit to the authority of to comply with a command or a direction or a instruction. To mm -hmm. comply. Obey me to comply. In other words, God told, told Saul, uh, I, 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 I asked you to comply to my instruction. In other words, all he said was, I actually, I'll ask you to do what I said. Mm -hmm. That's all. Just do what I say. You know, and he didn't do it. He said, it's all I have. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way in which the Lord sent me and have brought Agai the king and, and, and Amalek and have early destroyed. He said, I went and I've done what God told me to do and have brought the king. God didn't tell you to bring no king, though. When you're going through your season, when you're in that wilderness, he said, go straight south. He mean go straight south. He don't mean detour, go west or southwest or northwest. He said, south, go straight south. Where well, some hills down there, go straight south. See, but by, by the time you get to where the hill was, somebody might have did some landscaping. Mm -hmm. And they, they ain't hills no more. I didn't remember seeing this when I come to the last time. Just go where God told you to go. And watch how he prepared for you. So, he said, I, I, I say that, but the people took the spoil, but the people took the spoils, verse 21, but the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and give out. And then we said, he said, now, ain't this a strange thing? He said in, in verse 20, he said, And Saul said, Lord, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way in which the Lord sent me. I have brought Haggai at the king of Amalek and have utterly destroyed. 
I have brought Hagar, the king of the Amalite, but everything else is destroyed. But, however, nevertheless, the people, the one took them oxen and stuff and brought them back, <laughs> they did that, shuck and blame. Shucking and blaming. That's what he did. Shucking and blaming. The people did it, but I, I, I brought the king back. I did what you told me to do. And say, I didn't tell you to say no king. I said, destroy it. Your season now has been disrupted because you're disobedient. Okay. I ain't want to blame the people about what they did. Okay, so now let's read this verse right here. This is our main verse. Verse 22. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Stop right there. And Samuel said unto Saul, Has the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? See, sometimes we be we get into this thing like, Well, this is what the Lord wants. I know this is what the Lord wants. The Lord like this. The Lord mm -hmm. like this. I know this is what He wants. I sought the, I asked the Lord and He told me so. I prayed about it. I did this right here. You better know what you're praying for. Hmm. You better know what you're praying for. And you need to really get into God's word and understand what it is that God telling you to do. If if you listen with an audible ear mm -hmm. and a spiritual heart, you will hear what God is saying. And there won't be any doubt of what God is saying to you. Mm -hmm. I've utterly destroyed everything the people's brought the oxen and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you to my for a sacrifice. For a sacrifice. Who told you to make a sacrifice? You are the king. You are not the priest. You are not the prophet. It's not your position to sacrifice, to perform sacrifice. It's not your position. See, we have to know our position. Mm -hmm. So many times in churches, people try to claim positions. And God ain't put them there. So many times, pastors and bishops will put people in position that God ain't put them there. Ain't called them to be in. Mm -hmm. You can't take a musician and try to make him a flower boy. Amen. You, you, you just can't do it. You can't take a security guard off his post in the yard and tell him, look, I want you to go to the kitchen and get the cooking. Mm -hmm. That ain't what God called him to do. Because if you take a security guard who used to who, who used to telling people what to do and and, 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 and securing stuff and, and you put him in the kitchen and he drive a hook to a piece of chicken and the chicken don't look right, Lord don't know what he may do with it. This ain't right. Get up out of here. Throw it in God. You just don't know. In other words, do what God had called you to do and lead the rest to the people that he called to do that. Saul didn't do what God called him to do. He talking about a sacrifice. God ain't call him to make no sacrifice. You are not the prophet. You don't make mm -hmm. sacrifices. The prophet is responsible for that. The priest, that's their job, not yours. It's just like it's just like being the president of the United States. There's some things that you can do, and there's some things that you cannot do. And this is why they got all these different branches set up to help regulate. Because if you don't, they, they, you might be all out in, in left field somewhere. So there's always got to be something there to regulate what's going on. Read on to the, read verse 22 now. And we're going to wrap this thing up. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion mm -hmm. is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity mm -hmm. and idolatry. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he have also rejected thee from being king. This is the result of being disobedient. God said, Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? You, you think God wants your sacrifice? You think he wants you to do this and do that? Did that means something else? Well, I gave, I gave. I didn't have to give a 10 percent, but I, I gave 20. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have to give a 10 percent, but I gave 40. I didn't have to do this for him, but I know I said 10 percent. I made $100 a week. Instead of giving 10, I gave 50. You think God care about that? Mm -hmm. No. God don't tell, care about you giving $50 out of your $100 check. What God tell about is that you giving that 10 percent that he required of you to give. 
Now, if you want to give 50%, that's on you. $50 or whatever, that's on you. He just concerned about you giving the 10% that he required. Now, if you don't get a 10% and give 5%, then God got a problem. Because now we're not being obedient. Your 50% may be a sacrifice, it's probably not even a sacrifice to you, that's why you're doing it. But you're doing it just like a lot of the scribes and Pharisees were doing things to be shown for their own benefit. God don't look at the out appearance. That was a woman, she gave one pen. Wow, that was all she had. Mm -hmm. That was all she Ooh. had. That one cent, that's all she had. Yes. So, so, so this is what God trying to get us to see so that our disobedience don't disrupt. Our season of prosperity. Because mm -hmm. it said, and God said, Grace the burnt offering, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. I need your obedience. Because to obey is the key. key. It's better than sacrifice. He said, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of the lamb. It is much better to obey the Lord in the first place than to disobey and then have to follow or have to go and ask for forgiveness. See that 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 that's that's a that that, that 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 that's that's one of them things that 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 people really regret too. They say I'm sorry. They say I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry. And and people just don't want to do that. They do stuff somewhere. They'll get over. But then later on they come out like, you I know you ain't mean nothing about that. I didn't mean nothing about that. That's her. They don't want to say I'm sorry. They don't want to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. This is why God said it's better to obey than to sacrifice, and to hearken. In other words, to do it. Than the fat of the lamb, because it's much better to obey the Lord in the first place than to be disobedient and then have to say or oh, oh, ask for forgiveness or oh, 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 please forgive me. I, I I know I'm wrong. And then when you ask for you have hardly done it in the first place. And it said trusting in sacrifice and while forgiveness is always available, it is better not to need forgiveness. Hmm. Uh. You agree with that? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> why forgiveness, listen, why forgiveness is always available, it is better not to need it. Not to have to ask for it. Because obey, obeying is better than sacrifice. And when you obey, you don't have to ask for forgiveness. When you do the right thing, you don't have to you don't have to be talking about forgive me. I'm sorry. Just do it. Taking, taking two muscles to smile, mm. taking 15 muscles to frown up, <laughs> what's better? Mm. Exert all that energy trying to make an ugly face or just to think about it. Mm. Life, life presents us with some simple alternatives. Mm. We in ourselves disobedient. Present ourselves with headaches and pain. Mm. We go through the length to find the hardest way to do the simplest thing. Mm. By humility come honor. Mm. By humility. Honor come from being humble. Saul shook and blamed. And in his in doing so, his mm -hmm. season of prosperity was disrupted. Mm -hmm. Disobedient. For rebellion is as the sin in verse 23. Read it again for me, please. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm. And stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion, which is what Saul did, he rebelled against what God had told him to do. He said, "Rebellion is the is is the sin of witchcraft." Lord have mercy. God said, "When you were being rebellious, you it's like in witchcraft, mm -hmm. Witch, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. That's some serious stuff. We don't think about things like that. In other words, we do not think about the harsh reality of our actions. Mm -hmm. We don't think about it." A lot of times we do stuff on impulse. We just do it. We just do it. You know what I said? We, we, we didn't think. We just did it. We just did it. What we, we do? But there's repercussion behind that. that there's, there's some things that going to follow you doing stuff on impulse. He said, he said, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. 
as stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Other words, stubbornness is an irretractable spirit. Mm. Mm -mm. That refuses to obey the word of God. Mm. Stubbornness is an irretractable spirit that refuses to obey what parents tell you to do. Stubbornness is a retractable, irretractable spirit that refuses to follow the law of the land. Stubbornness is an irretractable spirit that refuses to sit back, analyze, and understand what thus says the Lord. That's what stubbornness is. Stubbornness is an irretractable spirit that says, oh, nobody know more than me. <laughs> hey, that's what stubbornness is. And that's what Saul had. He had a stubborn spirit. Because Samuel had went and told him, I'll be back in seven days. But you want to be more than what you are. You couldn't wait to do what I actually do. I said to Saul, Saul, so you couldn't do that. You got to do what you want to do. You don't say it under man. I'm doing me. And then let's go on down and read verse 24 right quick and we're going to close. 24 and 25 and we're going to to bring this to a close. And Saul said unto Samuel, Amen. I have <laughs> sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord mm -hmm. and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Hear what he said now. Now he finally want to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. I did what God told me to do up in the other part. I followed his commandment. Now he won't tell you the truth because Saul, Samuel done laid it on the line for him. He done told him your rebellious spirit. That's an irretractable rebellious spirit that you got there. That's what you did is like sin or witch trap. He put it on him now. <laughs> See, sometimes you, you got to put it down. You have to tell the truth. Church, we have to tell the truth. Pastor, we have to tell the truth. Lying to somebody or fixing up stuff for someone is not anything that's good for them. We have to tell the truth. Samuel told Saul the truth because God had laid it on him. And now he said, he said, and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and your words. He said, I, can, I, I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and your words. Because Saul told him what to do. And Saul got his information straight from God. See, when your supervisor tells you what to do, that's what you're supposed to do. If something goes wrong, it's on the supervisor. You ain't got to shuck and blame. He got to try to shuck and blame, but that's what he's going to do. Because he told you what to do. The law stated you follow the last commandment that you get. I don't care if ten police officers will tell you something. The last one that told you, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Let him deal with the other ones. Mm -hmm. So Saul said, do so and so. God told Samuel what to do and what to tell Saul. And Saul should have followed the commandment, the word that was put down to him by God. Or by Samuel from God. I, I'm going straight to the top. I'm not just saying he ain't going to tell me what to do. He's your supervisor. If he ain't tell you to stick your hand up on that saw and cut it off, then you do what he tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Because whatever go wrong, it's going to be on him. It's going to be on him. But you have to be obedient because your obedience is better than sacrifice. Your disobedience will interrupt your season that God has planned for you. So he said, and he said, Why I look, Lord, and the words of the Lord, because I fear the people that obey their voices. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth, shame the devil. I did this because I feared the people. Moses did that because he got mad at the people, called them rebellion. They would get on his nerve. And Adam did it because he just looked at the woman and said, Okay, baby. <laughs> and in each case, you see the results of it. Mm -hmm. In each case, that's not a good result, mm -hmm. a not good ending. It's not a good ending. Yeah, I fear the peoples and obey their voice. And now, therefore, I pray you, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now you want forgiveness, but guess what? Sometimes a mistake that we make or sin that we commit is irreversible. Mm -hmm. Irreversible. I can forgive you and we can move on, but the sin itself is irreversible. I can't reverse that. If I, get, if I was to get drunk and go out the road and kill somebody, I can't bring that life back. 
I can say, forgive me. I can talk to the parents and the family and say, forgive me. And I, and I, I can try to make restitution to them for it every day. And I can make restitution for the rest of my life. But I can't bring the life itself back. Mm -hmm. What Saul had did was irreversible because we read on. A matter of fact, jump up to verse 26 real quick. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. It's irreversible mm -hmm. because of your disobedience. Now God has rejected you. Mm -hmm. You will not be king. Please, Saul, please, Saul, Samuel, pray, pray to God that, 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 that he'll just bring you back here and give you. No, 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 it can't do it. Your sin has become irretractable. Irretractable. No, he can't do it. So please, please pray to it. For, for to reject the word of the Lord is to reject the Lord himself. <laughs> to reject the word of the Lord is to reject the Lord himself. You was told to do this. You didn't do it. You rejected me. Now I have rejected you. You will not be king. I'm not going to destroy you, but you won't be king. I'm not going to fire you, but you won't be the supervisor. Stop. I'm not going to stop sending you out, but I won't send you down that way no more. Yeah. Because you're disobedient. This is your season, but being disobedient will disrupt your season. Adam's season was disrupted because he disobeyed God in listening to Eve. Got kicked out of his apartment. Yes. Moses' season was disrupted because he listened and got upset with a hard head or rebellious people. He couldn't get into his new apartment. He couldn't get into his new land. Saul's season was disrupted because he disobeyed God himself and kept something that he should have got rid of. Yep. I remember one time I got a, a check. Didn't know where it came from, how I got it. And I was like, now I know this, this ain't mine because I got a check, but this thing right here, where this come from? This ain't mine. So, I, I question the people about it, and, and look, I got this check here, I don't know where it comes from, and, and, and I don't want nothing that don't belong to me. I inquired to find out what the real deal was. I went to the right source to get the right information. In other words, I didn't go to my wife Eve. I didn't blame the people because they're rebellious. I didn't listen to the people and say yes. animals and stuff. I went to the source. In other words, Saul, Moses, uh, and, and Adam should have went right back to the source, mm -hmm. God Almighty Himself, and got the proper information that they needed to deal with the situation at hand so that their mm -hmm. season would not be disrupted because of disobedience. God bless you. We love you. Next week, guess what we are going to do if God bless us? Next week, with God bless us, we are going to return again back into this is your season, but it being disobedient will cause it to be disrupted. Part three, and we'll be dealing with Jonah. And I know some of y'all familiar with Jonah. And we'll be dealing with Jonah. So God bless you. We love you. We hope that today you receive something good again from this word of God. Uh, and we're so looking forward to next week when we can do this thing again. If you, if you enjoyed it, please continue to see your comments because I'm looking at some comments now that are coming in and have been coming in all through the service. Continue to bring me in because we're here to still fear another ministry. We're simply trying to do one thing, and that is to do what God has called us to do. We don't want to be Moses. We don't want to be Adam, and we sure don't want to be Saul. We don't want anything taken away from us that God has already blessed us with. This is the season of the still fear another ministry, and we want to walk through it. In obedience, not disobedient. And most of all, what we want to do, we want to put a praise on it. So God bless you. We love you. Until the next time, God, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done with us today. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for this word of God. We are praying right now in the Lord in the name of Jesus that you'll reach out and you touch those who are listening, who are looking at this service today 
this morning, O oh God, that you'll touch them in a mighty way, and that the word that has gone forward, Father God, will take them throughout the week, O oh Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We'll pray for those, Father God, who are locked down, locked out, and locked up today, Father. We'll pray for those who cannot pray for themselves today. We ask that they will go into the nursing home, to the hospital, to come a home, to jail, to prison, Father. Go out into the highways and the byways where the lonely, the, the lame, the disheartened has been slain, Father God, and minister to that very need right now. We'll ask, O oh Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you open the eyes of those who have been blind, Father, to your entrapped the word, which is able to save their very soul. For this is the day that you are made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it for what all you are doing and what you do. We are praying right now, God, that you continue to touch the steel free of none of ministry and the whole entire family, Father. Bless it to grow by leaps and bounds because your word said that you are the one to add to the church daily. So we'll thank you right now. Once again, for all our listeners and all our watchers, Father, of the steel free of none of ministry. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Until next time, once again, when things are going bad, what do we do? We put a praise on when it. When things are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on it. 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 God bless you. We love you. <laughs> amen. Goodbye.